Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And thank you to GMAT Club for organizing this event. Uh, my name is Widat Sunny. Um, I head up marketing and admissions here uh, for the NUS MBA. So welcome to the NUS MBA and welcome to the one, one of the most transformative MBA experiences. Um, today, I will take you through a quick overview of the program uh, and a quick overview of our admissions process as well. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, towards the end of this session. Right, so um, why Singapore? Um, Singapore is the gateway to Asia. Uh, it's home to Asia's top university, uh, the National University of Singapore. Um, a lot of uh, people, um, you know, enjoy living and working in Singapore. Uh, we have been voted uh, number one in Asia for the best place to live. Uh, we're also proud to say that we uh, uh, have the best labor force in the world, according to Barry's Labor Force Evaluation Measure Report. Um, Singapore is also home to uh, many multinational corporations uh, with regional headquarters, uh, including names like Google, Facebook, PMG. Um, it's also home to the NUS Business School, um, which is one of the top business schools in Asia. The NUS MBA program is a globally ranked program. Uh, we've been um, ranked uh, number 15 in the world by the Financial Times recently, uh, number 10 in the world uh, by Poets and Quants, and we are also number one in Asia, uh, according to The Economist, uh, as well as Poets and Quants. So why the NUS MBA? Uh, we offer one of the most transformative MBA experiences in Asia. Uh, so let me explain what we mean by this. Uh, this is how the program comes together. Uh, I'd like to talk about you know, the three components, uh, three parts uh, of the program. Uh, you start off by building a balanced MBA foundation uh, with our unique dual core, comprising uh, academic uh, core modules as well as experiential core modules. I will uh, go into further detail uh, in a moment. Uh, so you complete all 10 modules um, as your foundation. Uh, and then um, you then go on to tailor your MBA program to fit your career goals. Uh, so you choose and complete, complete seven electives uh, among, uh, uh, you can choose from academic electives as well as experiential electives. And uh, third, but also most importantly, and this is where um, we um, really take pride in how our MBA uh, program is differentiated. Um, you know, you come on board when you do a full-time program and you spend 17 months uh, on the program. Uh, we offer plenty of opportunities and you also have sufficient time to pursue all these learning opportunities, whether they're internships, exchange programs, immersion programs or study trips. Uh, the various activities are organized by the student clubs, um, courses and activities and events that are offered through the Global Network for Advanced Management and uh, a multitude of industry learning opportunities. Um, for the full-time program, um, you, uh, uh, you take the program over uh, um, three semesters and two special terms. Um, for the, if you opt to do the part-time MBA program, you have the option of completing the program over a 24-month schedule or a 30-month schedule. Um, I have an announcement here to make in case um, some of you are not aware. Uh, for, the, for this upcoming year's intake, 2020, we have decided uh, recently uh, to postpone the program uh, start to January 2021. This is in view of the evolving COVID-19 situation. Um, so both full-time and part-time formats uh, have been moved to uh, start in January 2021. Um, for the full-time program, you have two options, uh, either to complete the program in 17 months or 20 months. Uh, the difference here is the uh, windows of opportunity for you to take your internships. Um, so you can opt to take your full-time internship uh, during the winter vacation. Uh, there's also the option to pursue it during the semester on a part-time basis. Or um, if you would like to pursue a full-time credit-bearing internship, you may also do so. Um, if you are keen to pursue an uh, internship during the summer uh, or summer internship, you can, extend, you can choose to extend the program duration by three months 
so that you can take part in the summer internship in the second year towards the end of the program. And here's a quick look at the uh, revised schedule for the full-time program. Um, so orientation is scheduled to start um, at the end of the year, early December, uh, sorry, late December to uh, early January. Uh, so you will kick off um, the program uh, with launch your transformation. That's one of your experiential core modules. And you will do this together with the part-time cohort. Um, and you will end the program uh, sometime in April in 2022. Okay, and should you choose to do it over a period of 20 months and pursue some internship, you will complete the program three months later. The part-time program, um, uh, the start uh, is the same as the full-time program, uh, but you will be looking at completing the program if you choose to do it over a 24-month uh, schedule or period, uh, sometime in November uh, 2022. Okay, so, um, so we have um, been responding and reacting to the evolving situation uh, with COVID-19, and we have a full list of uh, frequently asked questions uh, and answers on our website. So please do visit our website for more details. Uh, so let me go back to what makes our program different um, and what do we mean by um, offering you the most, one of the most transformative MBA experiences. Uh, our unique dual, with our unique dual core, you can choose to do um, uh, academic core subjects, uh, ranging from corporate strategy to managerial economics, uh, managerial operations and analytics, and leading with impact. Um, our experiential core, um, uh, so these are compulsory modules. Uh, uh, you kick off the program, as I mentioned earlier, with a bootcamp uh, called Launcher Transformation. And this is an intensive five-day boot camp uh, that really pulls you out of your comfort zone and equips you with the essential communication skills and soft skills. Um, the MBA Survival Kit is a series of uh, classes that is aimed at building a solid foundation uh, with a set of essential skills to help you succeed uh, in um, uh, doing the program and beyond. So uh, classes comprise, um, you know, uh, the art of uh, negotiation, pitching, consulting, for example. And in the MBA consulting project, you get to apply what you've learned uh, to solve a real business challenge. Um, you, work, you will work in teams of four to five, um, together with company representatives uh, and, and with faculty supervision. So the a second part, um, of the um, program, uh, starting from semester two onwards, you have the option to tailor your MBA to fit your career goals. We offer more than 50 academic electives, um, ranging from finance, marketing, consulting, digital business, strategy and organization, analytics and operations, innovation and entrepreneurship. You can also choose to do um, an M, uh, the NUS MBA with a real estate specialization or healthcare management specialization. Uh, we also offer a range of experiential electives, uh, for example, the Lean Launchpad, Tech Launch, and Singapore Biodesign Fellowship. So these electives offer you the opportunity to acquire very valuable hands on startup experience uh, where you will learn to conduct research and um, um, uh, work out um, uh, the viability, visibility uh, in, in commercialization of new ideas and technology. And then, uh, so the highlight of the program itself is you get the opportunity to amplify your, your experience and take full advantage of these learning opportunities across internships. Uh, so you can opt to do uh, internships on a part-time or full-time basis, or uh, on a credit bearing basis as well. Um, with the Global Exchange Program, we offer um, short or long exchange programs uh, uh, with um, one of our 60 partner universities worldwide. For the short exchange programs, the duration is about one to two weeks long. Uh, for the long, um, the long uh, term exchange program, it's a semester long. The Global Immersion Program or International Study Trips are one uh, uh, our student-led 
uh, study trips. Uh, past destinations um, have included London, Tokyo, Delhi, Yangon, Shanghai, Sydney, you know, the rest of Asia. And um, this is where, uh, you know, students get to immerse themselves, speak to business leaders, uh, industry leaders, uh, immerse themselves with, uh, in, in, in the, um, you know, um, in the um, actual destination um, and, uh, and industry and provides value, valuable opportunities for industry immersion as well. Um, we have a very thriving uh, student club ecosystem. Um, we offer, uh, there are 11 clubs in total um, and you can uh, choose to lead uh, such activities by becoming a student leader at one of these clubs or uh, you can choose to participate in any of the activities across these 11 clubs. Um, the Global Network for Advanced Management is a prestigious network um, of top schools around the world and, and US Business School is proud to be uh, a member school. Um, with GNAM, uh, you have opportunities to take part in activities such as Network Weeks, uh, which is hosted by a member school um, each year. You can also take part, for example, in a short network online courses. Uh, some of these courses can be credit bearing, and this will enhance and augment, um, you know, what uh, you what what you're learning uh, uh, on the program. We also offer lots of industry learning opportunities, uh, um, whether they're in the classroom or outside of the classroom, uh, so you can further interact with industry experts and leaders. And for those of you um, who are looking at uh, taking up a double degree uh, with the NUS MBA, we offer uh, opportunities um, for you to study in Singapore, Seoul and Shanghai through the S3 or s -Cube Asia MBA. Uh, this is offered uh, with Fudan University School of Management as well as Korea University Business School. Uh, we also offer a double degree with Peking University uh, Guanghua School of Management, and as well as with RGC Paris. Okay. Uh, here's a quick look at our class profile. Uh, this is uh, our 2019 intake uh, for the full-time class. Uh, we have about 100, close to 100 uh, students uh, with work experience of uh, an average of six years, uh, an average age of 30 years old. 35% of females, uh, and they represent 26 nationalities from around the world. And for our part-time class, um, we have just over 60 students uh, with an average uh, work experience of eight years uh, and an average age of 32 years old. 28% of females, and they represent 12 nationalities from around the world. And all of these students are currently residing and working in Singapore. Um, a quick look at citizenship by region uh, for the same intake. Um, so you can see 90% um, of uh, our students on the full-time MBA program are international students, uh, with more than 80% coming from uh, Asia uh, and the rest from the rest of the world. Um, with the part-time MBA, half of our students are Singaporeans, while the rest are expats uh, that are living and working in Singapore. In terms of career prospects and development, uh, these are some stats that I'd like to share with you. Uh, we're happy to share that 94% um, of our students are employed within three months of graduation. Uh, and these are the salaries uh, post MBA. Um, we, um, in 2018, uh, the data that we have shows an increase of 125% on free MBA salary. Um, with the data that we have uh, for the 2020 rankings, um, uh, three years after graduation, our alumni uh, are, um, reported an average salary of close to the US 170,000. Um, and these are, um, uh, some statistics on employment by industry uh, post MBA. Uh, the three top uh, industries are technology, financial services, and consulting. 
But as you can see, there's also a, a wide array of other industries um, uh, represented here, uh, from transportation and logistics, to media and entertainment, to energy, FMCG, and so on. Uh, and some of the top recruiters uh, include Microsoft, Amazon, JP Morgan, KPMG, and Goldman Sachs. So when you come on board uh, the MBA program, we have a dedicated team of uh, career services um, uh, officers uh, working with you very closely from, from the moment you come on board uh, to when you're re re uh, ready to graduate. So, um, for example, in semester one, uh, the focus of uh, such services will be on self-assessment and career planning. Uh, for example, helping you uh, on your uh, career goals, uh, helping you get more focused uh, or, or recalibrate if necessary, and helping you build your personal brand. Um, in semester two onwards, um, the, uh, these um, uh, activities focus more on developing your career skills and building your network. Uh, and then as you are preparing to graduate, then um, the services uh, activities are focused on helping you practice and gain experience through internships uh, and then helping you um, refine your job uh, search strategy. So they're with you as every step of the way. Next, I would like to uh, share with you a quick overview of our admissions process and some tips on putting together a good application. So we have one intake a year, which normally starts in August, um, with the exception of this year and the postponement of the program start to January next year. Uh, the 2021 intake is still scheduled uh, to commence in August, 2021. Um, the program duration, um, as I mentioned earlier, 17 months full-time, and 24 months part-time. Um, you will need a good bachelor's degree. If your bachelor's degree wasn't done in English, and then you will need to complete an English proficiency test. Uh, we look for a good GMAT, GRE scores. For the part-time program, if you have a minimum of seven years of work experience, we also accept executive assessment scores. Uh, we look at candidates with a minimum of two years of work experience, uh, but the average work experience is about six to eight years. Uh, we will also require two referee reports from you. And referee reports are, are reports, um, or referrals rather, from um, your profession, uh, they are professional referees. So these need to be either your um, immediate superior, supervisor, um, or, uh, or your could be could be your previous boss or previous employer and your previous employment. Um, we will also need transcripts, uh, mark sheets of all your educational uh, certificates, and this is the link to uh, apply is mba.nus.edu.sg/apply. So please take note if you're still um, putting thinking of putting your application in uh, for the coming intake to start in January 2021. We have uh, extended our application deadlines uh, for both full-time and part-time uh, formats. Um, to you, So you will need to submit your application and all your test scores by the 15th of July. Um, we practice um, admissions uh, reviews on a rolling basis. And so we award um, offers as well on a rolling basis. Okay, so if you are planning to uh, start your application, I would advise you to uh, create an account uh, on our application portal. Uh, get ready your test scores. Uh, there are four essays, um, in each uh, with a 250 words um, requirement. So you make sure that you are as succinct as possible um, with your essays. Um, you will need to upload uh, transcripts, your degree scroll, your test scores, a copy of your passport, uh, your CV, uh, a financial document. And by this, we don't mean your bank statement, um, but your computerized payslip. Uh, and should you not be able to provide a payslip, then um, an alternative would be an income tax document, perhaps. 
And for those that are applying for the part-time program, um, you will need to submit a copy of your employment pass. Um, next, uh, your think about who you want to appoint or, or, or ask to be your referees, um, because on the application portal, you will need to submit their email addresses, uh, and, and the referees will be uh, completing um, the reports uh, themselves, and they will be submitting it directly onto the portal. And these will not be submitted through you uh, manually, but will be automated through the portal. Okay. Uh, and lastly, uh, don't forget to click uh, submit and pay your application fee. Uh, and, and please note that applications can't be amended after you've submitted it. Uh, so how long does it take? Um, you, once you've submitted a completed application and our admissions officers are verified that we've received all your documentations in full, uh, you will be shortlisted for, uh, 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 if you are shortlisted for an admissions interview, uh, you will be notified within two to four weeks. And once you've had your admissions interview, um, you will receive a final decision from us in two to two, four weeks as well. And once you receive an offer, uh, you have about two weeks to accept or decline our offer uh, and pay an admittance or an acceptance fee of uh, $10,000 before uh, goods and services tax is $10,700 uh, in order to accept our offer. So in total, you can expect this process to take six to eight weeks. So what makes a good applicant? Um, and we look at uh, an applicant holistically across uh, various uh, parameters, uh, from academic capacity uh, to your professional achievements. So what you have accomplished in your career, um, career trajectory as well as leadership potential. Uh, by leadership potential, we don't mean uh, that you necessarily have to lead or manage a team with direct reports. If you do, then uh, that's good to highlight. Um, if you what we're looking for is your ability to, to manage. Um, uh, if you have worked in cross-functional teams or cross-geographical teams, you know, do, do highlight that. Uh, if you've had several promotions within the same uh, company, uh, do highlight that as well. We do assess for program fits as well. So um, it's not just about um, um, whether you make a good candidate for the NUS MBA, it's whether the program is a great fit for you as well, it's what you're looking for uh, in, 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 in order for you to achieve your, your learning objectives as well as your career goals. And the admissions interview also plays a very important part here uh, in, in, in um, the total evaluation. So be prepared uh, for, for the interview um, in, and, and, and um, in a, Take the opportunity to really shine and to show yourself, um, and 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 showcase your 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 personality as well as your experience and accomplishments. Uh, very quickly here uh, on scholarships. So we uh, we do award scholarships on a rolling basis, uh, but do observe the deadlines uh, for the full time MBA program. The deadline is at the end of January. Uh, if you do submit uh, uh, or request um, uh, uh, an uh, to be reviewed for a scholarship after uh, end of January, uh, do note that the scholarships will, may still be available, but on a limited basis. For the part-time program, uh, the deadline to for scholarship awards is mid-May, um, and uh, we the final tranche of scholarship awards are usually given out by mid-May for the full-time program and mid-June mid for the part-time program. Uh, there is no separate application. Uh, you just need to uh, write an essay in your application submission, um, an additional essay. Um, and on average, 20% of our participants receive scholarship support. Uh, the scholarship awards um, average approximately uh, 15 to 30% of tuition fees. So are you please do visit our website for more details on each of these scholarships that we offer. Okay. So I've come to the end of um, my overview. Uh, I will take any questions 
uh, right now. <laughs> so what is the advantage of small class size of NUS as compared to the huge class size of other bis business schools? Okay, a great question. So uh, definitely with a much smaller class, um, you have the opportunity to be heard, uh, to, to, to discuss and talk to each of your classmates, right? Um, it's also more in intimate. Um, you get to know your classmates better. Um, and um, I think more, more importantly, um, you know, if you have any questions, can you imagine if you're in a class of 100 or 200, um, you know, it's, it's quite difficult to be heard. Uh, in, in such a huge class. So those are the advantages of being in a small class. Okay, Garvit. Does, does NUS have a separate club council for startups? Um, we, uh, it's not really a separate club, but we do have what we call the NUS Enterprise, which is part of the whole, the National University of Singapore's ecosystem. Um, so the Lean Launchpad Experiential Elective, for example, is offered uh, in collaboration with NUS Enterprise. And you can have a look um, uh, 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 online uh, uh, for more details on, on, on that. Uh, Jeremy Lee, can you share more about the minimum GMAT score required? So we don't practice uh, minimum GMAT score. Um, we do practice uh, competitive GMAT scores. Um, uh, I've shared with you just now the average GMAT score for our full-time part-time programs. So do aim to do the best you can uh, with your GMAT or GRE. Matthew, can you speak a little about where the 20% of the class who pursue consulting ends up? Fine, I'm an American. Does that limit my post-MBA employment to Singapore and North America? Um, okay. Uh, a lot of... Um, I don't have the data on hand, uh, but uh, a number of uh, our graduates have ended up in uh, local startups, um, for example. Uh, so Singapore, um, I think if you also do some research, you, you'll find that Singapore, the Singapore government is uh, very pro uh, uh, a startup. So there's a thriving uh, and, 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 and very proactive um, uh, a framework uh, for, for encouraging startups in Singapore. So there are opportunities there as well. There are also opportunities um, around the region and around Asia as well. Uh, Asia is a growth uh, sector, a, a growth region. Uh, so it's not just limited to Singapore. Uh, you know, there are uh, uh, you know, emerging markets uh, and also countries uh, in Asia uh, where there, there may be opportunities as well. Peggy, uh, what are the chances candidates with 10 plus years experience to be admitted to the full-time MBA program? Okay, um, again, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, so uh, it depends on, you know, how you spend those 10 years of experience, right? Uh, if, if you've spent quite a number of years in a managerial capacity, for example, then you may be more suited for an EMBA program, an executive MBA program, and we offer that as well. Um, so, and if you if you have been a functional expert and you feel that um, you want to go back to a full time, you want to go into a full time MBA program uh, to um, gain broader business knowledge, for example, um, to um, you know develop your soft skills perhaps and your leadership skills perhaps. Uh, so, you know, there are different factors that we look at as well. So it's not just a number of years, but where you are, what you've achieved, um, and whether you may be a better fit for the executive MBA program. Uh, so we will be able to advise you um, accordingly. So if you'd like to be assessed for program fit, you can reach out to um, our MBA program officers. Um, so June Lee, who's also listening in to this session, uh, and we are happy to conduct um, a one-on-one -on -one consultation with you. So what do you look in a reapplicant? Re okay, great question. 
Um, so we look at you putting um, forth a stronger application. Um, so, um, so again, we look at not just GMAT scores or GRE scores or EA scores. We look at um, you know the um, accomplishments uh, that you have achieved or made in the time where between when you last applied. Uh, so highlight all of that. Uh, that would be key. Um, uh, the class is mostly composed of Asian students every year. Can we expect an international experience? And how is the cost fit for international purpose? Okay, so um, let me answer this. Um, okay, so international experience is gained uh, not just through the curriculum. Um, so we talk about the program offering a global curriculum, but with a focus, a strong focus on Asia. And what we mean by the strong focus in, uh, on Asia is we use Asian business cases um, in our in the classroom. Um, the international exposure you will get is through uh, you know the diversity, the exposure that you get um, with um, students from you know other countries around the world uh, through the international study trips as well, uh, for example. Um, and potentially, uh, you know, sometimes through internships as well. Um, so I hope that answers your question. But I think if you would like to ask, um, um, you know, get more, get get firsthand uh, uh, experience or understand the firsthand experience from any of our students, please reach out to us, and we are happy to connect you with with some of our students uh, or one or two of our students who may be a good match uh, with you in terms of your background. Uh, uh, and 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 career as well. Dexter Dexter Lee is asking: Does management consulting firms like BCG recruit at an US business school? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay, Shivam, I'm sorry if this was already covered, but could you discuss the geographical distribution of the class after the MBA? Okay, um, I take this question to mean whether um, um, graduates uh, get the opportunity to um, pursue a career outside of their pre-MBA experience. Um, and yes, the answer is yes. So uh, I, I, there are some students that, well, Singapore is a, you know, it's an attractive place. Uh, and is the gateway to Asia. So um, we have um, uh, a lot of graduates that, that upon graduation, um, either pursue careers, not just in Singapore, but in the rest of Asia as well. Um, so um, you, we, if you could email us, Shivam, uh, I, we should be able to send you a copy of our program brochure, uh, which has, the data that you need. Okay. How much weightage is given for someone who's working in family business? Um, let me, the, okay, let me answer this question uh, in this manner. And I think what you mean is how would we assess someone with family business experience? Uh, because there's no weightage per se. Again, we look at the skills that you've acquired um, and what you've accomplished. So whether it's a family business or whether it's a big corporation, um, you know, if you can demonstrate that um, you've acquired, um, you know, you've made big, great accomplishments and 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 acquired, uh, you know, some fundamental skills. Uh, and demonstrated growth uh, and potential as well. Uh, we will look at those things as well. Are fresh undergraduate students able to apply? How are the admission rate and how? Okay. Uh, unfortunately, we don't accept fresh graduates. Uh, uh, so we do require um, experience. So unlike the Master of Science programs, uh, the MSc programs that we offer, 
uh, we we look for candidates with experience because the MBA program is about learning from your peers as well. So it's not just coming on you know attending classes. Um, you, we we look for diversity in our candidates and our students um, so that they have the opportunity to learn from one another. What do you look under extracurricular? Um, well, um, so we look at what your passion points are, what your hobbies are. Um, uh, so, you know, be, if, if you've done voluntary work, um, you know, if, if um, making a social impact is close to your heart, for example, you know, highlight those, um, you know, if, if you are, um, um, you know, we, we want to know you, you know, 360 as a person, right? Um, if that doesn't come through in, I mean, make sure that that comes through in your CV um, and during the admissions interview as well. Um, you know, that's one of the questions that we like to ask uh, because we really like to get to know you and understand you as a person and understand what makes you a unique in individual uh, and what uh, and how you can contribute to uh, the community, um, uh, the culture of the program, uh, how you can help enhance the learning experience uh, of your other peers as well. So considering that, okay, so offering a deferral for candidates to August 2021, how do you see the vacancy shape up? Okay, so we've had a handful of deferrals, not a lot. Um, and I think also because um, we decided to postpone the program start to a full semester later, uh, that's given, uh, um, you know, the our students and applicants sufficient time to readjust their plans accordingly. Um, so we are expecting a normal size class for January 2021. We uh, for August 2021, it's still you know uh, we haven't started the application. We haven't opened applications yet. Uh, applications uh, will open for the uh, next intake in August. Okay. So I think we have we don't have any more questions. Um, I must apologize for the background interruption. Um, my, I have a cat, <laughs> an elderly cat who's quite needy. <laughs> oh, okay. Here's another question. How often uh, do students at NUS are able to switch career paths from pre-MBA industry to a different industry after MBA? Okay. Okay, that's a great question. So we have, you know, we have, you know, broadly two different groups of um, students, right? The career enhancers and the career switches. Um, so, uh, you know, for both groups, right? Our career services team um, uh, will work very closely with you to help you, um, um, you know, sharpen your focus, um, you, you know, it, it, and if need be, recalibrate um, your career goals post MBA as well. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I don't have the data on hand, but there, there is quite a number of student uh, graduates, right? They've come on board um, and decided to focus their career um, in, in a very specific industry. Um, but, but, you know, realistically as well, because, you know, don't expect a very unrealistic career switch uh, from if you are, you've been in, you know, communications, for example, and you want to go into FinTech, right? So that's quite a big jump, right? Um, you know, what we will ask you uh, during the admissions interview and in your application as well is how, what is your plan? How do you, how do you plan to achieve that? Uh, you know, where, where do you think are, are the gaps uh, in terms of your knowledge, in terms of your skills? Um, because, you know, imagine the MBA uh, program is a platform. Uh, we provide opportunities for you to, to get to your goals, um, but the rest is really up to you. So I think we have very little time left. I can take a final question, perhaps. Okay. 
All right, so thank you everyone. Uh, thank you so much for your time uh, and for your questions as well. Uh, if you have any final questions, um, do contact us at um, nda at nus.edu.sg. Um, you can also call or visit our website. Um, and um, thank you for, again, for your time today.